Hello everyone, welcome to Talents Print. In this session of physics, we shall discuss the mechanical properties of solids. So in the topic called uh, introduction to physics, we have learned about the matter. So there are five stages of matter, right? Solids, liquids, gases, plasma and Bose-Einstein condensate. So now we shall see what is the uh, mechanical properties of solids involved in physics. Okay, so shall we start? Are you ready? Yes. So first you know what is a solid, right? Solid is nothing but it is a closely packed body which has the tightly packed molecules where the uh, movement for mobility of the molecules is very less and it can be deformed on force, right? So what is this deforming force? First, first we shall see some of the concepts related to mechanical properties of solids. So first what is a deforming force? So deforming force is nothing but it produces change in configuration of the object on applying it. It is called a deforming force. Suppose I am applying a force F on this solid so it may move like this, right? So there may be a deformation of the object, right? Clear with this? So this force F is called the deforming force. Understood? So which causes a change in the configuration of the object on applying it is called a deforming force. Moving on to the next concept that is elasticity. Okay? So what do you mean by elasticity? Elasticity is nothing but it is a property of the object by virtue of which it regains its original con configuration after the removal of deforming force. Now, suppose this body has deformed like this. So after when I remove this force, now I am removing this force F. If the body is able to regain back its position, which was in the earlier case or the original case, so then that body is called as an elastic body. Understood everyone? Okay. So general examples are steel, rubber, all these are elastic body. Some may be perfectly elastic. That means when I apply a force, it will totally regain its shape. So such bodies are called as perfectly elastic bodies. Some will be uh, temporarily elastic. Right. So moving on to elastic limit. So how much force I can apply so that the body can regain back its original shape and size. So elastic limit is nothing but it is upper limit of the deforming force. If the deforming force is removed, the body can regain its original position completely. This is a very important line. It should regain its original shape and size completely. Then only we can say it is elastic. Okay, and beyond which if deforming force is increased, the body will lose its property. So there is some limit. So up to this limit, the body is elastic. After that, it will become inelastic. Suppose if you have taken a spring, right? So suppose I am applying a force called F on the spring. The spring may have some force and up to some limit, it may come back to its original position but after some external force if I apply more than uh, the earlier one the spring may not regain its original position and it may be permanently changing its size and shape. So elastic limit is very important as far as mechanical properties of solids are concerned. Moving on to stress then what is this stress? Stress means we are not uh, generally mentioning about the physical stress which we face like humans. This is a stress which is generally related to pressure. So I mentioned stress as pressure, right? So what is this? So when a body is subjected to a deforming force or restoring force is developed in the body, this restoring force is equal to the magnitude in opposite direction to the applied force, see. Suppose there is a solid, right? So in the solids we have the molecules tightly packed. So I'm applying a force called F, this is a deforming force which will be the change force for the solid. So when I am applying a force to regain back its original position, there must be a equal and opposite force which is applied by the solid itself so that the body will regain back its original size and shape. So such restoring force per unit area is nothing but the stress. 
So stress will make the body to come back to its original position and shape and size. Okay. So magnitude of this restoring force is stress is equals to force per area and its unit is force your unit is newton and area is meter square so newton per meter square is one pascal so same like pressure right pressure is force per unit area so stress also has the same unit force per area that's unit is newton per meter square which is one pascal moving on to types of stresses so generally we have two types of stresses but we have some more stresses also first we will see what are the general types of stresses the first one is normal stress so it may be called as normal stress as the name directly tells us the stress is applied perpendicular to the body so it is applied perpendicular to the body clear with this the length of the wire or the volume of the body changes stress will be at normal okay and what do you mean by longitudinal stress when the length of the body changes by the normal stress that is applied on it is termed as longitudinal stress so here the length of the body is changing when length changes when length changes it is called longitudinal stress clear with this okay when the volume changes it is normal stress when only length changes it is called as longitudinal stress then what are the some other types of stresses we these are the other types of stresses which we are seeing tensile stress compression stress and shear or tangential stress so what do you mean by this so simply instead of going these definitions first we will see this figure then we'll go to the definition so when we understand the concept we'll get the definition automatically no need to mug up the things so first what is tensile so tensile means it is a stretching force remember this it is a stretching force so see the first figure tensile force so both the forces are pulling the body away from the center right so then the body will get elongated the length will increase so increase in the body's length is nothing but the tensile stress then when i compress this forces that means i am compressing forces are nothing but the compressive stress okay so the length of the body will be decreasing Okay, there will be change in volume or change in the length of the body and it will decrease. The length will obviously decrease. The width may increase. Suppose I am press, pressing in this direction. Okay. So when I am pressing this body in the, both these directions, the, here the length may decrease but the width may increase, right? So change in volume may be positive or negative but length will be obviously negative. Then what is shear or tangential stress? When the force that is exerted on the tangential to the surface is being applied and it transforms the body. So see suppose I am taking an object here. So I am applying forces on the body. See on the body means I am applying suppose there is a body like this. I am applying the forces on the body, on the top of the body like this, the tangential force. This is called tangential force. Okay. Suppose there is a uh, box like this. This is a top view of this box. I am applying the forces on the body. This is called tangential force or tangential stress. Okay. The force that is exerted on tangential to the surface, it is being applied on and it transforms the body. Such type of stress is called tangential stress or the uh, shear stress okay moving on to strain we have seen stress stress is nothing but force per unit area right and what is this strain strain is something which after i have applied the force i should know how much the body has elongated right so i need to know this because of the strain value so i can know this because of strain value the change produced per unit dimension is nothing but strain so change in dimension by original dimension suppose the length is 10 meters minus earlier it was 8 meters by earlier 8 meters so total strain will be how much 2 by 8 that is 1 by 4 okay that means 25 percentage is increase in the length of that body okay so as I have applied a stress the strain should be 
increasing okay or decreasing next hooke's law so after we have studied stress and strain we shall see what is hooke's law so what is this hooke law so hooke law says hooke law says stress is directly proportional to strain always always stress will be directly proportional to strain if i am applying positive stress there will be positive strain if i am applying negative stress that means deforming the body in or reducing the length of the body the strain will also reduce that is length will also reduce so as stress is directly proportional to strain when i remove the proportionality constant so i will keep a proportionality constant so e is the modulus of elasticity that is stress by strain so its unit is obviously stress unit is force per unit area strain unit is change in uh, dimension by original dimension right so what is the unit of uh, young's modulus of elasticity this is newton per meter square and this will gets cancelled and this unit is one so totally uh, young's modulus unit will also be the same that is newton per meter square or pascal so within the elastic limit the stress strain graph is passing through origin we will see in the next slide so what is that stress strain curve this is a stress strain curve hope you have studied in the intermediate or high school level this is a stress strain curve given by robert hook so this is called the elastic limit so within the elastic limit the line will be passing through origin and it will make 45 degrees the slope will be 45 degrees so oa is the proportionality limit so elastic limit will apply till the stress is directly proportional to strain okay so we can see here e is the breaking point so still if i stress more the body may break down and it may break into pieces okay so this is about the stress strain curve given by robert hook so hope you have learned enough things about mechanical properties of solids we shall meet in the next sessions thank you so much